Support for the Fearscape Media Network is brought to you by Manscaped, the best in men's below-the-waist grooming champions of the world. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped just launched their fourth-generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0. You heard that right, the 4.0. Join over 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer just for you. 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code FEARSCAPE at manscaped.com. Fearscape Media Network, exploring the unknown, one podcast at a time. Coming to you from a mom's basement in nowhere. A suburb of parts unknown. Your ghoulish hosts for an evening of terror. Stefan Gearhart and Lance Wayne. The Misters of the Dark. <laughs> Welcome to your nightmare, everybody. That's right. This is Stefan. And my boy right here, Lance, we are the Misters of the Dark. Hey, Lance, what's up today? Good evening. Yeah, we got a good show. Thank you guys for tuning in to Misters of the Dark, where we talk about all things horror and all that jazz. Uh, yeah, as you guys know, we get our uh, victim, <laughs> I mean guest, <laughs> guest, I mean guest, for, what? What? for the oh, evening. Okay. Yeah, uh, and so for uh, this evening's episode, uh, we lured uh, Victoria Elizabeth here with a taco. Uh, pretty easy to get. Uh, lured her right into one of those cages. We had one of those sticks that went underneath of it and just put a taco in there. And hey, Victoria, I mean, I didn't think you would actually go on the first try, but you did. Just like Bugs Bunny. Uh, tacos are delicious, and you know they're my first food group, so... That's right. Well, we told her we, uh, you know, we would, you know, think about not killing her if she would watch this movie with us, and uh, so that's essentially what we did. And so, but yeah, Victoria, you know, we heard you're part of Improv 502 in Louisville. You guys do improv stuff, and you paint with Nerdium. That's all cool. I'm sad that's, like, the last time you're going to be doing a lot of that stuff. At least, this is what I heard. Uh, wait, you you think about? I, I thought the agreement was I watch it and I'm 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 gonna live. Yes, yes. They, they probably have improv in the afterlife. But anyway, yeah. Seriously, whatever. Look, 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 look. We digress. Stop, stop being so. I don't know. Unnegligible. Yeah. Quit, quit being selfish. Yeah, you're the one that picked the movie. You picked the movie. Yeah, you picked this film. Now, granted, we gave you 17 DVDs with the same title on it. I, I just, uh, um, uh, okay. Did you well, think we were watching Boss Baby? <laughs> <laughs> the Baby. Yeah. The, the Baby. Uh, well, for all of our ghoulish listeners out there, uh, the movie that uh, Victoria did indeed choose from out of the exact same 17 copy is 1973's the baby and whoa mama yeah this is uh <laughs> i don't even know that i would call it a horror film though it may be a thriller though it may be an exploitation film though it may be a uh snuff film, a snuff film. i don't know uh this was uh directed by uh ted post which we'll get into a little bit but yeah this comes from 1973 it's a doozy of a film the tagline reads what goes on in this nursery isn't for kids. <laughs> oh, man, that's the funniest part of the whole movie. Uh, anyways, uh, before we get into uh, reviewing this movie with our victim for tonight, uh, oh, sorry, Victoria for the night, uh, we are going to get into a little bit of horror news for all of our listeners out there. Oh, yes. 
This is the man with no name, Lance Wayne, Anchorman of the world. Bring you the latest yeah. in horror news. First up, don't know if y'all heard about this, but uh, there's this thing going around called COVID-19. Oh, yeah. Didn't uh, didn't our Uncle Jack start that in like a laboratory in mom's basement? Uh, in Wuhan, China. But anyway, oh, yeah. Wuhan. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Yeah. Wu yeah. Wuhan. Uh, yep. Yeah, I get all my news. Uh, I, I get all my news from Infowars. But uh, <laughs> either way, uh, yeah, this is uh, this whole COVID thing's kind of putting a little. It's kind of putting a damper on everything. Like uh, movies haven't been coming out. Mm -hmm. uh, concerts. I, like people have haven't been walking around. We haven't been able to kidnap and murder anyone in quite a while. No, and, and also for the people for the people that uh, we are abducting. Wear a mask. Wear a mask. I don't want to get I, sick. I don't yeah, want I mean, you spitting I mean, on me when I'm cutting your throat. Yeah, I mean, don't d wear a mask. Sorry, Victoria. Don't we'll don't be don't, don't kill we'll yourselves. That's our job. But anyway. yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to wear a mask eating a taco. Well, you're allowed. To, it's just when you're screaming and gurgling blood. We don't want you spitting that stuff. We're social yeah. distanced right now. Think of somebody else for your for a change. Look, Wait, you're, when tied, I'm what? you're tied to a chair. You're not getting anywhere near us. It's fine. You're six, you're six feet away from us. Yep, not six feet under, six feet away. And if you don't wear a mask, you're going to be six feet under. The more but anyway. You know. uh, but, uh, yeah, this is also, it's looking like this is going to put a damper on uh, all the Halloween activities coming Boom. up, you know. Trick or treating, um, but, and 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 even the haunted houses. Man, but, I'm uh, telling you, I had a sweet Betty Boop costume I was going to wear this year too, Lance. <laughs> Jesus, well, uh, thank thank God, thank God, uh, they're canceling Halloween then because spare everybody <laughs> from that. But uh, the, according to iHorror, uh, there's going to be there uh, there's going to be this new thing going around that's called a drive-through haunt experience. Hmm. And uh, what iHorror has to say is, recently we shared the sad news that Universal Halloween Horror Nights is being canceled this year, which, hey, you get a two for right there. There's yep. news like that. Yeah. Uh, they, they, that's the first time it's been canceled, and my God, it has to be 20 years. Yeah. But uh, uh, it says there is a bit of hope coming out of Orlando, Florida this week, though. Looks like Haunted Drop. Haunted drive throughs might be coming to save the spooky day. Woo! That'll, it'll, uh, I, the Haunted Road is a contactless haunted experience that allows you to enjoy the spookiness of Halloween while practicing social distancing from within your vehicle. Hmm. The entire event was designed with physical distancing measures in mind from contact free check in by license plate to immersive drive in scenes, the press release describes. Japan announced earlier this year that they would have a haunted drive-in garage experience. Their experience would have the haunt play out around your vehicle. It seems that the haunted road is taking from that experience and expanding it a bit. Attendees of the drive through haunt will experience a ghastly rendition of an untold story of Rapunzel as she journeys into a world of disarray, faces blood cuddling creatures, Curdling, I'm sorry, I can't. And, uh, today. I love blood cuddling, Victoria. Yeah, blood cuddling, blood yeah, it's the best kind. And hundreds of shocking scares. So yeah, I think. I think I, so here's here's my questions. Okay, first of all, this is like what the you know uh, it's like Christmas. Okay, so the steal from Christmas, like when you drive through like the Christmas lights experience, yeah, yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not in for that because you know, listen, as much as I like killing people and then scaring people, I don't like getting scared. And uh, if you're scaring me and I'm in my car, I'm I'm slamming on the gas and then everybody's dead and then I'm responsible. Well, I mean, at least it's outdoors, so you don't got to worry about exhaust fumes or anything like that. That's true. Well, unless you're in the haunted garage. Yeah, that is. But yeah, yeah with the uh, road, I mean, I guess they would have them stop at places, I would assume, and then put the car in park. Because um, you would yeah. have to, man. Because you know how people just already are already, like, ready to punch somebody in a haunt. Like, imagine when you're in your car, man, because I'm like, I'm gone. I can't wait to see somebody get scared and punch the window. <laughs> I don't know. That, that, that's, but no, I, I think I think it seems like a cool little idea, honestly. Um, I mean, what is it as good as a haunted house? I guess no, because you know you don't have that. 
that physical interaction or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder, I, I don't I, know. What was that? I, I was just going to say, I could see it working if they did it like where like, you know, you go to the car wash and you put your car in neutral and like it takes you through that way. Right. Like I could see that, that being like yeah. a safety measure, but well, that I'm a little like, Work too. Is, are your windows down or open? Or I mean, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, and it's like specify. if it, it, yeah. and here's what I would do is I would I would do the uh, drive-in technique where there would be like some radio station that would play all the sound. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. That yeah. Was, you could go cool. through, and it, it could even be all pre-recorded. I mean, it don't matter. Whatever. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, very interesting, but yeah, I, I'm I I would be I I would bet that something like that's going to happen in other states as well. In fact, I'd love to talk to uh, Liv and um, Eli, our friends from Improv 502. That yes, do, yes, yeah, yeah. I bet, you they, I bet you their people are already trying to figure out new ways of doing stuff. We should we should oh, yeah. them one night and have them on and talk oh, about yeah. haunts. That'd be a good idea. Vir- vir- virtual haunted houses. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Vir- Dude, man, I'm, I'm telling you, those VR haunted houses scare me. I've never oh, tried one. Oh man, they scare me. I need to get a new one now because I broke my last one. So I got I've always wanted to. I've always liked my haunted houses in automatic. And I, hey! <laughs> <laughs> Coming at you like Ooh, right, yeah. Like That's a word. But anyway, my I, I'm not. I, I you would. I wasn't meaning to uh, have such come off with such a uh, holiday sort of <laughs> theme. But uh, according to Bloody Disgusting, there is going to be a Gremlins. I, I and forgive me, I can't pronounce this right. Advent. Yeah. Advent. Advent. Like an yes. Advent calendar. Yeah, cr- a Gremlins Advent calendar. I am totally <gasps> it's, down for that. Yeah, it's going to release in. It's going to re- uh, release in fall of this year, uh, and it's from Jack's Pacific. Now, yeah. that does not surprise me because, you know, there's the animated show coming out on Netflix soon. Um, yeah. Um, uh, right. Something Secret of the Mogwai or whatever. Yeah. So I'm sure so, it's going to tie in with that. Yeah, it says here the Gremlins Countdown calendar features 31 different slots meant to be open daily with a fun Gremlins minifigure standing one inch tall nestled inside of each of those boxes. Man, that would make me Catholic again. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's all it would take. That's all. It, that's all it would take. I would be praying. Well, I just, it just for me, it's just like uh, for somebody who hates Christmas. Uh, this actually is something I could get behind. Yeah, it, uh, we're we're, seeing, we're we're into Krampus knocked. Right yeah, because that, that's something that's really popped up in recent years. Is um, I mean, it's, I guess it's been going on for a while, but it's it's become been becoming more and more uh you know commercialized yeah that uh here lately is uh the whole uh horror christmas thing yeah it's like there's it's always that, a horror. and i think it's kind of like you know i'd like to i'd like to pay homage to things like black christmas or like you know silent night deadly night but honest to god it was really this resurgence of krampus i think that is yeah. really put, that yeah. maybe nightmare before christmas yeah but yeah, especially I mean, God, man, there's like fifty Krampus movies now that it's crazy. Only one worth a damn is the twenty fifteen one. Oh yeah, that one's really good. Though I do like that uh that that one with uh William Shatner where it's like different Christmas things where he's like a um a radio DJ or whatever. That one's pretty I'm good if you haven't. One. It's like it's called like uh Christmas Nightmare or something like that. I, I highly recommend that one. <laughs> It's it's good. <laughs> it's stupid. I've good. only seen the one. It's just, I I I can't cannot remember the title for the life to me. But it's very straight to DVD, you know. Mm-hmm. But it's like at some point, Krampus brings this gl- girl chained up like to this cave, and he meets up with Santa, and Santa just starts beating the hell out of this poor woman. I mean, it's like Reservoir Dogs meets. Christmas. I think, I think you were watching a porn called Cramp Puss. <laughs> wow. You, it, wow. Just, How long did it take you to think of that? I'm one? Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. Wow. And the tagline is Have you been naughty? 
or naughty. <laughs> Good night, everyone. <laughs> uh, people are listening to us. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, who's the real victim here? Yeah, who's yeah. the real victim, Victoria or the audience? Because it's not all us. one of you. <laughs> it's not us. It's not us. A shout out to that 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 person. Thank you. That one person <laughs> that one person. is really looking forward to hearing from us. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, any other news going on that we need to be in the wire for? There, Lance Wayne, the man with no name, no. the man of the world. Uh, no, I believe that's it. So with that, uh, this has been Lance Wayne, the man with no name, Lance Wayne, give you the latest in horror news. Remember that is the man with no name, Lance Wayne, anchor man of the world. I love that man. I love that man. Uh, but what I love more is discussing this awful great movie that we're about to discuss. All of more is babies. Is is baby? I love babies. Uh, Especially so, twenty one uh, year old. So we're going to take a very, very quick sponsor break. And then as soon as we get back, we are getting jammed into this like a baby gets jammed back into elbows the deep, elbows deep into this womb. That's called the baby. Oh my God. <laughs> Fearscape, a paranormal podcast, part of the Fearscape Media Network. Prepare to be spooked. <laughs> New episodes every Wednesday on all major podcast platforms. Find out more at FearscapePodcast.com. All right, ladies and germs, we are back. Uh, We have loosened Victoria's uh, hand ropes a little bit so that she can... Yeah, her hand ropes. Her hand ropes, yes, hand ropes. God. Um, you know, just so she can have some popcorn or whatnot. Uh, but we're going to be just, dis- we're going to be discussing the 1973 titular, titular film, the baby. <laughs> I mean, this did movie, any other, did any other movies even come out this year? I don't hear. I, I don't even care anymore. Yeah, yeah. The only, the only film that matters is this limited release film called the baby. Uh, directed 1973. of 1972, directed by Ted Post. Now, this is starring, interesting because Ted Post, Ted Post is the guy that directed Magnum Force. That's right, a Dirty Harry movie, which is a pretty damn good movie because that's the one with, um, oh, uh, what's her name? Uh, da, 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 Tate. Oh, God. Now, now I can't talk. Um, Tate? No, it, the sister of the guy from Wings. Um, holy moly, my brain just stopped. Uh, da, 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 daily, daily, um, Tyne Daily. Tyne Daily. did the voice for Superman? Yes. Okay. So, yeah, so uh, Tyne Daily uh, is his sister. She's really young in this. Uh, but anyway, she's in that. She's not in the baby. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just want to put that out there. I was confused <laughs> about where I knew Tyne Daly from. Uh, but anyways, he also directed Beneath the Planet of the Apes, uh, as well as uh, an episode of Twilight Zone and some other TV stuff. So kind of confused here because um, he took this shit really seriously. And I, I, I don't think that it intended to be um a cult classic though but essentially so this was directed by ted post written by abe polsky this film stars anjanette uh anjanette comer ruth roman mariana carter (laughs) not quite linda carter um suzanne zener and david manzi and this tells the story of a social worker who investigates an eccentric family which includes baby who is a 21 year old man uh, this says who acts like an infant. I don't think he's acting. I think he thinks he is an infant. Um, yeah, so. Like this, in real life? No, in the movie. Like, no, it says that he acts like that. Day. Let's I break him on. I don't, I don't think that he, that the character was play acting. I think he really thought, uh, you know, I really think that he thinks that he. Um, was a baby now what's interesting is about this is most movies that we talk about we're able to see the budget and we're able to see how much it made it's not existent on this page so i'm really i'm just gonna go ahead and assume that it made no money and it had no budget because 
it looks like it didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying anything either. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, this was distributed by Scotia International um, and uh, Quintet Productions. I wouldn't have stamped any of my companies on this. Um, but, yeah, let's let's talk about this movie a little bit. So, I mean, essentially, you got these three ladies living in a home. You got the mom and two hot daughters. Yeah, I that was something. That was something. Yeah, that that I wanted to bring up was uh, was it wrong that I found the daughter so attractive, especially when that one later on in the film, like I like I stated earlier, uh, looks like an extra in a Motley Crue video. <laughs> yeah, with her hair two with her hair two foot feet off the top of her head. And- For sure, and we'll we'll talk about that. But yeah, definitely at times the fashion and some of the things seem like it was made in 1983 and not 73. Yeah. So I guess in a way this movie was ahead of its time. <laughs> I, mean, I, don't even, I don't know if you could make this movie now. I- <laughs> <laughs> oh God, no! Oh I mean, no! Especially in '73, you're just coming out of the '60s and stuff. I so I just so regardless. I mean, we uh, you know so we, like we said. So we've got this. We got these three ladies. They live in this big house, and the social worker shows up, um, who is uh, is and gentry is uh anjanette comer plays the social worker there uh and like we said we totally thought she was linda carter uh yes flat-chested linda carter um because i mean seriously that's the only thing that made me go this can't be linda carter yeah and uh i looked her up was not well that and the fact that her name isn't yeah, it's, Ange- card. it's Anjanette Comer. <laughs> um, but I swear, I mean, even then she looked like somebody I'd seen before, and I looked through all of her list. I have not seen anything. I mean, maybe something like where she was on an episode or something or whatever. I don't know. Maybe. I don't She know. did look very familiar. I couldn't place her at all when I was watching it. and But she's got that face that you just – you know you've seen it before. Yeah, we're pretty but, sure but, that yes. it's uh, that she looked like Linda Carter. <laughs> like that's yeah. that's, that's, that's <laughs> what I mean, it's I'm not, I'm not seeing anything really familiar on her film or TV I filmography. Told you, I went through it, man. I don't know who she is, but I mean, on a couple episodes of, it looks like she was on Gunsmoke, Bonanza, right? Which is interesting because Ted Post also directed episodes of Gunsmoke and Bonanza and stuff like mm. that. So I wonder if he picked her because he had worked with her before. I, I must have. Because, I mean, don't Possible. Me I Go ahead, victim. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say also, you know, sometimes when people were in episodes, but they didn't have a major role, they're not credited to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, anything's possible. Um, but I thought she did a pretty good job for her role. Um, she earned an Emmy nomination. It says here for outstanding performance and a supporting role. Yeah, she by did. An a, actress. She did pretty good. She wasn't bad. I mean, she you know in she terms was of acting for the baby. <laughs> oh boy. No, no. <laughs> no, but no, she she did pretty good. She wasn't bad, and she actually played a pretty standard seventies um, stereotype. Of, of actresses at that time that we'd seen in horror movies from the 70s before. I mean, it's just kind of that spunky, you know, like, but down to earth at the same time, um, strong female. I hear the yeah. world from under my feet. <laughs> That's just as we buried someone alive. Um, but anyways, so she's a social worker. She plays a social worker. So her point is that she's going to this house to check in on them. Well, this is not the first time that they've had social workers. And, um, of course, as we already said, the baby is actually a 21 year old man. Um, so she Same the baby. Yeah. So somehow, somehow the state is giving them money. Uh, I guess because he's got a mental disability. Well, they, they never really specify, do they? Yeah, she just said that we we live off of the money we get from the state from social services for the baby. But it seems as if yeah, it seems as if they're treating the baby as if it's a baby because she seemed like CPS to me, like Child Protective Services. Uh, yeah, that, that's what I kind of thought. My, I thought she was honestly. Yeah, like, I mean, I, it was never specified which department, but you know, but yeah, she's in there because she had heard <clears throat> through one of her friends. 
about this and she was very very keen on getting in there and she fell in love with baby right off the bat so. yeah and i don't know like i personally i mean i, I don't i don't want to spoil the ending yet mm-hmm. but uh, oh wait a minute that's something i guess we should say spoilers Spoiler alert, yeah, if you haven't seen this movie, we're probably going to talk a lot about it and give shit yeah, so Because we're assholes. That's what we do. And we kill people. We do. But uh, anyway, uh, I, yeah, I just like, I, I, I mean, I don't know if this was something the filmmaker was going for, but it was like up until like the reveal of just – why she is so infatuated with baby. Yeah. Not it very screwed up. Very, you know. Yeah. I mean, they make allusions to her losing her husband or pretty early yeah. on. Cause I think um like the mom's like, Well, I know you'll just get to go home to your husband and your children. And she's like, I have a husband. I mean, I had a husband. <laughs> or something like <laughs> Like he died in a wreck or some shit that was alluded to um, and all that stuff. But regardless, like, you know, the, the mom, who boy, this mom, this mom, like if this was made today would need to be played by Jennifer Tilly or Kathy Bates, one or the other, just depending which angle you're going to go for. <laughs> just, yeah. Jessica yeah, Jessica Lange. Yeah, Jessica Lange. Yeah. That'd be a good one too. Yep. She she's something else, but I mean, she's basically, you know, like trying to talk her out of it because they they don't want the social workers coming there and messing with the baby because they know it's a 21 year old man. So um, they don't want their money taken, but somehow they decide, okay, we'll let you keep coming. But the best part is uh, the next scene, which is the only actor in the whole thing that I knew was her uh, her boss. At the uh, at the social services was the mafia boss in the first Rocky movie. The guy that Rocky's working for. Yeah. Really? What what's the actor's name? Do you know? Oh God, I don't know. But he, I've seen him. I've been seeing him in some other stuff. Actually, I think he's the same guy that's in um, uh, Ma- Maniac. Well, I there's a guy here. Um, he he's in a Rocky movie. He says also. I can't, I can't remember, but it says he appeared in a Rocky as uh, the sports administrator for the Soviet team. So was I Rocky four? Where you? No. Boxes? So this guy I'm talking about is Joe Spinell. Joe Spinell. Okay. Now then we're yeah we're talking about different person. Yeah, Joe Spinell. He was yeah he's the main guy in Maniac, um, the main killer in Maniac. And uh, he was Gazo in the first and second Rocky movie. So, like, in the very beginning of Rocky, when he's, like, uh, having to go break that dude's leg or arm because he didn't pay the mob boss guy. This is the mob boss guy. He's got the big sunglasses on and rolls up in the car and all that stuff and yells at Rocky for not breaking the guy's leg. That's that's who this guy is. And, like I said, I've been seeing him, like, in so much crap lately. I I, I just... (laughs) I don't know why, like, he's been standing out to me, but he's in a ton of, like, horror movies and TV shows, and, of course, he's most famous for being in Maniac, so, uh, which is on my list for us to uh, cover someday, but, yeah, I mean, he's that's, in... The- that's, that's the film about the dude and uh, who scouts people, yep. right? Mm-hmm. Okay, Like, one All of right. the very, one of the early, early films. Uh, horror yeah. films, but he's in the last horror film and Night Shift and Vigilante and uh, Nighthawks, which uh, I believe is another um, uh, Ted Post movie. I believe I could be wrong on that though. But yeah, Ninth Configuration. God, I've seen a lot of these, and so I've I've seen him in a lot of stuff. So yeah, so that that's why I got excited because I'm like, hey, I know that ugly guy that kind of looks like he could be Ron Jeremy's dad. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that nasty looking son of a bitch i've seen him somewhere i've seen him somewhere <laughs> um but yeah this movie is weird and it, it spends a lot of time um essentially i mean a good 20 minutes 25 maybe 30 minutes like just watching uh the main character and the baby like just get interact man. interact and the one like i will say the one unnerving thing about this movie was the fact that they used an actual baby cry and scream for baby um sound effect and it like it weirded me out like 
I think I would have preferred like the man's voice to be crying instead of an actual tiny baby's voice. Yeah, it, it was man, this, this this whole film just <laughs> there wasn't really like it's one of those films where it's just it's almost like uh, the only thing I can compare it to is uh, and I'm, I'm not trying to just because you know of it's recent or whatever, but it's like Tiger King where there's like. And all of the main people, like, you just don't like. You don't like, like, like anybody. Yeah, because even the social worker, it's like, you can already tell that she has her, like, own agenda. Oh, so. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And they, they present some of that early on where, essentially, she wants to take baby away from them. Um, oh, completely. Completely. Yeah. I mean, the very beginning, the opening credits, you can tell that there's something else going on there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it's so apparent. Um, but what I don't I don't know which order this happens, so I don't care. Um, but the uh, babysitter that the, they have. So the girls decide they're going to go out. The girls and the mom decide they're going to go out and they get a babysitter. So once again, here's somebody I thought. I knew who it was. The blonde little babysitter I thought was the chick from the first Friday the 13th movie. Oh, really? Because was... <laughs> you know how she had that same haircut and blonde and everything. But then when they got close in on her, I was like, oh, I'm pretty sure that's not her. And I looked her up and she was in like four things. So <laughs> it was not her. But again, I was deceived. Um, and Jesus, man, that was like 73 versus what, what, 70 or 80. So she would have been, that would have yeah, been seven yeah. years prior. Mm, yeah. I should have been, I should, uh, immediately I should have been like, well, that can't be her. She'd be 12. Yeah. Um, but, it, and I don't, I don't, I don't know about 1973 standards, but you couldn't be 12 year olds filming the scene that she was in. No, no. And well, and that's the thing. So here again, so to talk about how it's ahead of its time, here she is having the same haircut that old girl had in 1980 in the first Friday the 13th yeah. movie. So here's another 80s hairstyle in 1973. This film predicted the future. We're, we're really not giving it as much credit as it does. Yeah, I know. So it's like, here's this chick. She's like uh, babysitting and you're waiting for baby to like kill her. Or like, yeah, yeah. like I'm, I'm immediately thinking this is like a large Damien here is what I'm waiting yeah. for. No, it just gets really? really awkward. That's not what I thought was going to happen. What happened is exactly what I thought was going to happen. And I'll tell you why. You, you projected Let me tell you why. Saw this Wait. And you were like, oh, there it goes. Wait. Yes. You want to know why? Yes. She didn't have on a damn bra when she walked into the it's room. It's 1973. Okay. That don't matter. It Nobody had a bra on. Nobody wore a bra. It not even back. Nixon. It doesn't matter. It was set up for that. You could just tell. You you could just tell. I knew, and I don't know if it's just because I'm a I'm a I'm a female, Probably. but I just I knew that that's where that was gonna go. This is from and personal it didn't experience. Make it any less creepy? Uh, I, I will say. <laughs> actually happened to you. I will, I will say, Lance, <laughs> that uh, there was somebody that did wear a bra, and that was J. Edgar Hoover. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes, yeah. But yeah, nobody was wearing a bra. That was Tom too. But yes, maybe that's a female thing. But I, you would think the two perverts here would be the ones that would be like, oh, this is about to happen. No, no, because see, you guys, when it comes to like children and, and females, it's a different bond and experience for them than it is for guys and children. I guess. And so yeah. even though this, this guy is supposed to be 21, which by the way, I'm sorry, I didn't think he was 21. I thought he was definitely in his 30s. So I don't know how <laughs> that was passing. Yeah. Um, but no, I just, as soon as that, I saw what was going on, I was like, this is not, this is not going to go well and I'm not going to enjoy the scene. Well, <laughs> at all. And, and so, so what happens is for, for those of you that refuse to watch this movie and I, I don't blame you. Um, so part of part of what we do here what a way we, to start everything part off. Part of what we do here for you is watch bad films so you don't have to. Um, but uh, what happens is, is they go in there and she's playing with baby. This is this is not the social worker. This is the babysitter. She's playing with baby and baby starts crying and so because he oh she, uh, he he jumps at a ball or something and hits his head or something I don't remember. But she's like holding him and then he like starts grabbing her boobs and I'm like okay the truth is coming out. This dude's gonna try to rape her man is what I'm thinking and again he's gonna kill her. He's gonna like slam her head. Oh in. okay. So you you thought okay. 
I thought Thank it was all going to be a sham. And I thought this was they, like, I was thinking Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Like, he kills babysitters and then they eat them. And that's why they don't need a money except for what comes from the state. None of that happened. What, what happened was even weirder. So he's like grabbing at her boob and she's like, oh, no, don't do that. Oh, don't grab my, oh, is baby hungry? Oh, let's get you a bottle. But baby's like, no. Nah. Next yeah. thing you know, like her shirt is hanging off and, and the baby is sucking on her teeth. Yeah, it, it like like what was disturbing to me, and I don't know, like I just I like Victoria stated, maybe it's just something yeah, maybe we can't understand. Yeah. But it was like she was almost getting off on it. Yes, well that yeah. was, that's what made it extra awkward. Okay, because yeah. yeah. the last time that I saw a baby suck on a, a a mama's teeth that wasn't her own was a hand that rocks the cradle. Okay, um, <laughs> and so I was, you know, but she didn't get off on it. She was just trying to make that baby her own. So, that is a statement I never thought I'd hear in my time. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever seen Hand It Rocks the Cradle? I haven't, but oh man, you should totally have to watch now. Hand It Rocks the Cradle. Yeah, this this like <laughs> live-in nanny comes in and slowly like tries to like make this baby her own by like making her drink her breast milk so she gets used to that and doesn't want her mom's, and so her mom starts to think the baby doesn't want her. It's oh, it's crazy. It's got uh. I think it's Rebecca De Mornay. It's either Rebecca De Mornay or Roseanne Arquette. I can't remember. Uh, but one of them. I think it's Rebecca De Mornay. It's a really good movie. But yeah, that's the last time I saw that. Well, here we got a 21-year-old man, maybe 35, grabbing at the... <laughs> which, by the way, if she's a babysitter, we have to assume she's probably 16 or 17. I would. That's exactly what I thought. And exactly what I her thought. Her parents are okay with her watching this 21 year old man. She's okay with watching this. They only well, have enough money from the state. So it's not like they got loads of cash. Well, if you think about it, like uh, the, the house has been with them for a while. So they probably don't have a mortgage. Let's, 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 if we think about this realistically for a, a moment, you have that. And then on top of it, the sisters do have side gigs. That's so there's true. that going on. And yeah, then I we don't know that. what kind of sugar daddies mommy dearest has, you oh, know. That's quite apparent in the in the scene later on. Right. Right. <laughs> but so, isn't isn't she getting some money from her late husband or whatever? Oh yeah. I think they did mention something about that. That there was No, I thought that there was no income, if I remember correctly in my notes here. Oh yeah, no, um, yeah. Yeah, because that's why they had to get money yeah. from the state. But right. but she's had previous husbands though that have yeah. died. Yeah. The latest yeah. one, baby's father, he's just disappeared. Yeah. So there's no telling what kind of inheritances there were or whatnot, but um I totally lost my train of thought. What was the question? <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> this movie will do that to you. It will. Uh, just just um, about whether how, whether or not they had inheritances or where they had money, because how are they paying this 16-year-old? Yeah. Oh, right. Well, and then the fact that why are, like, this the 16-year-old's parents allowing her to watch this child? Right. Well, I think the reason why was because, as far as anyone is aware, he has a mental handicap to where he truly believes that he – is a baby and there's there's no way around it like this is a this is a baby this is this is infant. true because this was you know? not something hidden the, i mean no. we later on they have a house party and everybody and their yeah. mother's there and, and right. the baby's there like it's no big deal so i guess that that's a thing yeah i didn't think about that yeah. that yeah this could be a neighborhood they, but i mean she and she doesn't have to be 16 she could also be like 18 and be a college student Sure. You do Definitely. weird you do weird shit when you're independent for the first time. I did later. <laughs> That's another podcast. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. But anyway, so she's getting her teeth sucked. Vodka, by my baby. only friend. <laughs> she's getting her teeth sucked by I gotta love the word teeth. She's getting her teeth sucked by baby. And turns you on. he's totally getting off on that. And uh, the, the mother and the daughters come home early just so they don't have to pay extra. Yeah. <laughs> Probably my favorite line in the whole movie. She's like, ooh, girls, we got in a little bit early so we don't <laughs> even have to pay extra. <laughs> yeah. 
oh, let's go see baby. And they go upstairs, they kick open that door, and oh my God, they walk into baby sucking on her teeth. And mama loses the hell out of her. Damn mind. The sisters grab her, rip baby off, hold her down. And then she just happens to have a rope or a whip or something just hanging out in baby's room and just beats the shit out of this girl, man. I assume she's dead, though at one point, I'm pretty sure at the party later on, she walks by as an extra. So not good because don't the, don't <laughs> not after after the uh, after the mom beats the hell out of her, don't the two uh, sisters they just end up kind of pushing her out of the room, don't? Yeah, they? yeah. Well, they beat her about the face really bad, and they said, "Stop, stop! Baby's watching. You don't want yes, baby." Yes, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then they told her not to come back or tell anyone, or else no one would believe her or something. Something along, like, along yeah. those lines. Yeah, pretty yeah. standard abusive tactics there. Right. So, yeah, okay, I guess she didn't die, but I'm still pretty sure she walked by as an extra later on, but whatever. Um, but, yeah, so that was awkward. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But that's the first that, that, that's the perfect that way. That's the perfect way to describe this film. Awkward. <laughs> yeah. I, I just, like, I felt like I just walked in on somebody, like, jerking their gherkin or something. Yep. <laughs> that's this, the feeling this film This gave movie me. is horrifically awkward. <laughs> yeah. Like, from start to finish. And um, I I don't even know what happens. Um, oh, this is when, when uh, like, Anne tries to take away the, the baby and all kinds of stuff. So we meet, like, is that her mom? Is that who that is? Judith? Her mother-in-law. 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 Yeah, okay, so, so Judith, who is, in my opinion, the weirdest character in the whole movie. Now, granted, I have hindsight, um, but she weirds me out. Yeah. Can we can we talk about the scene right before they get to Judith, though, and start that? Like, it was after the babysitter Yeah, please, uh, I don't remember. Situation. Um, and there's actually a couple of scenes in there before that, and it, it's when we really, like... So I don't know about you all, but I already got a sense and a feeling in the very beginning from everyone that they were purposely keeping baby as baby. Like yeah, it, it was I got, I got I that too. That, yeah. Right. So like when you when you see the cattle rod and you see Alba, oh, yeah. the oh, younger God, sister, yeah, for, yeah. That's right. You know, yeah. and, and basically telling him, You don't talk. Ba- the yeah. baby doesn't talk, the baby doesn't walk. And is like cattle prodding him yes, every single time. Yes. That. There's that scene too where they're outside and he's in the playpen. Right. And the younger sister is like, yes, yelling and saying all that stuff. And he's in that weird right. like grandmother's sweater, which was really weird. It's like female yeah. clothes. I didn't get that. Yeah. The, the Mrs. Voorhees sweater. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. That was Mrs. Voorhees had a, a more handsome sweater. What? <laughs> This was a more masculine sweater. <laughs> this, this essentially looked like this essentially looked like your great aunt's sweater, and she sewed some doilies to it. Like that's <laughs> what essentially this looked like. Yeah, but yeah, so like I that, forgot all about that. Yeah, yeah, and so I think that's like when we really start to see, and then it makes you wonder, like, well, when did that start? Like, right. when did they start training him essentially through abuse? Right, yeah. and and it's like, was it just to get money from the state? Was it to cover right. up something that happened? You know, like yeah. did he see the da- his dad get murdered or something? Because you know, immediately right. you're you're set up to think, man, these women are murderers. Um, yes, that's, that's and it's a total deflection away from the um, the CPS worker who we feel has weird intentions, but we we let it go because we see the cattle prod. We see them beat the shit yeah. out of the, uh, the babysitter, babysitter and yeah. things like that. Yeah. So I think it was a, a very good deflection to make us really distrust these women, um, which was right. in the seventies. Yeah. And then, and then what was the scene after that? It was Jermaine in her, her, her nighty. Oh, oh yes. yeah, the whole What incest. was that? I didn't what realize was that, that was this soon. Okay, yeah, so the weird incest. Yeah. So the the really tall one, the the hotter one of the two. So really she goes in like there. I kind of preferred the blonde in this. Oh, I, I, both. I, I, I digress. <laughs> Whatever. Um, <clears throat> yeah, but uh, yeah, they go. She, like, baby's crying or something. So she she goes into baby's room. 
I didn't realize that happened so soon. But yeah, then yeah. All of a sudden, like she takes her nighty off, and it's assumed that she goes in with baby, right? And you're like, it was already awkward that there was teat sucking here, and now we've got like brother sister incest. I I think it's, yeah. I mean, if he's mentally a baby, can he get a hard on? Yeah, yeah, and, and and essentially, and I mean, I'm, and I'm I'm not making a joke, but almost like pedophilia. I guess. You know what I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, if they legit yeah. think that he's a baby, it is indeed yeah. pedophilia. Yeah. Right, and and even though he's a baby, his body is still going to function how it's supposed to if he didn't think he was a baby. It's Which, just, by the way, this is how I feel about Forrest Gump and Jenny doing it. Really. Uh, um, I, I know. Honestly, she took advantage yeah. of Forrest. I'm just saying. Well, yes, I will say that there was something to that degree, but also, I mean, he he loved Jenny. Yeah, he wasn't a smart man, but he knew what love was. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, it happens. Like teeth sucking. Huh. <laughs> like teeth sucking. <laughs> Well, needless to Seven say, is all about the teat tonight. Well, I'm trying to forget about the incest that happened because I forgot. <laughs> okay, oh, well, ran- well, like the gone? and it was <laughs> such a random like moment, and it was quick. It wasn't yeah. like this was long lingering moment, and it was like you know the mom walks in, and it's like no, you shouldn't be. No, it was no. lightly hinted at, and then never spoken of again. <laughs> yeah, it was weird. Of- uh, did you did you think maybe like the scene like that? D- were, do you think that like they were ge- general genuinely trying to like I don't know say something or add another layer to this film or do you think they just did it for shock value? They were just like well, I, we have all this fuck other fucked up stuff. I, I think this? shock value. I mean, grindhouse yeah. films were super huge at the time. I mean, you know, like exploitation was was massive. See, the thing with this film though is like I honestly while I was watching it, I was thinking like I was I was actually thinking like how good it was filmed. How good this like yeah. if there's one thing I could say good about this film, it is the cinematography and you know Yeah. It's Especially filmed, it, like it you know, it's filmed it's legit. Yeah. It's just the subject. It seems Sorry. low budget, but filmed well. Uh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then nothing, nothing like innovative or anything like that. But I mean, it no. was just, it was, it, yeah, like you said, it was, it was filmed well. Yeah, but yeah, yeah I mean, Anne, Anne essentially threatens that she's going to take this baby at this point, but because of all the neglect that she's seen, that. She, but why? But why is she well, threatening that? I, I'm just saying she's using the guise of her job by saying she saw the prod, she saw the baby was being neglected, that he's being forced to wear diapers and things like that, <clears throat> yeah. and that she wanted to get him out of there. Um, but something feels off about it because she doesn't seem like she wants to get him out of there as an adult. She seems like she right. wants to get him out of there as a baby. Baby. Right. Well, and do you feel like if – if the mother hadn't gotten her thrown off the case because she was getting so suspicious that it would have propelled the movie the way that it did for the next events. It's, it's possible. It's possible. But yeah, I mean, that's essentially what happens. And, and um, somehow uh, she, the mom convinces her, Hey, don't do this. You know, because Judith is in on this as well. Judith is like, we got to get this child, this man child out of there. And, uh, but yeah, so, uh, mama bear is like, Hey, let me make it up to you. We're throwing a party. Come on over. Let us show you how good we can be and, and all that stuff. And already you're like, Oh bitch, don't go. Yeah. (laughs) Don't go. These women are ruthless. You're going to be dead. Cause I'm still at this point, I'm still like, man, these three ladies are evil. They're killing people. Baby. And uh, cause yeah, we really haven't had any murder. So <laughs> right, right. then we get to the party. My favorite part of the whole movie. <laughs> wait, party. wait, who was your favorite character during the party? Oh man. It, hmm, it's definitely not creepo McGee. Um, 
<laughs> Dan- Danny or Dan Uncle Danny, something like that. I don't know. To me, it's Mama. Yeah. I mean, Mama is my favorite character in that party. Oh, her just uh, I, her cutting a rug with that dude. Um, you got, the, <laughs> see, you, got the, <laughs> you got your standard like standard creepozoid 70s dude he's got his butterfly collar on and he's like just hitting on any woman that he can smoking a joint right out smoking the a joint drinking and he's like you need more to drink like obviously this guy wants to slip a freaking mickey in your drink he's that guy and uh, yeah he wants your in yeah and there are so many people at this party like and babies just hanging out like yeah just <laughs> while, while are in whatever everybody's cool with baby and uh ann's there and like she's like dancing and having a good time and they're playing darts together and things like that but my favorite is when old mama cuts a rug man she goes out there and dances <laughs> it's my favorite <laughs> this, see this is because we we, I, I, we were talking earlier about how we, we kept on forgetting whether this was an 80s or a 70s film when it got to the dancing part, that's when I was like, okay, this is 70s. Yeah, because the music kicks in. But at that <laughs> yeah, yeah. point, like the Wadsworth mama, she is dressed. She looks like Peggy Bundy. Like yeah. she's dressed up to the nines with like uh, zebra striped stuff and her hair is all poofed out. And then the older daughter, I don't even know what she did with her hair. Looks like but she mean, looks like she looks like she was in the looks that kill video. Yeah. I mean, her <laughs> hair is like teased up so yeah. high. I mean, it looks like, man, it's crazy. But I think that, I think that was the start of the mullet. Maybe, maybe. Really? But man, other daughters, know. you know, other daughter just look the same. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> other daughter though looked exactly the same. Like she just she didn't bother do anything else with her hair. Uh, well, um, I mean, she was wear she was wearing a uh, dress that left little to the imagination though. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but man, you got so you got Creepo McGee. Man, I mean this dude is just jumping from dame to dame and he <laughs> jumps over to Anne, right? And and the mama's like, You gotta get you gotta get Denny off of her or it's gonna foil our plans. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so you're like, plans? Uh-oh, what's gonna happen? So the young blonde goes and takes Denny and says, ooh, I wanna dance with you and go somewhere alone. And he's like, okay, new female, I don't care. I just smell tea. <laughs> and so, <laughs> <laughs> I just smell lactation. Um, <laughs> oh, girl. But anyway, so she's she's uh, Anne's over there playing darts with uh, the older daughter and some other folks, and she's drinking some punch, man. And uh, looks like a scene out of Roadhouse or something. Oh yeah, and what yeah. uh, well, they are about well, those Mama's darts. like cutting right? the rug. She looks yeah. over at the older daughter and like gives her the look up. Get that bitch some Mickey's slipped into her drink. <laughs> Kick you. And so she <laughs> goes over there and steals her drink and puts in another drink that has fucking a roofie in it. <laughs> and uh yeah so she's like playing darts because she says uh it was a very telling line because she said something like um you're not uh, why are you trying so hard she says because i always win yeah oh, I, yeah yeah along that line yeah. like i always what do I, I get whatever i want when i want it or, or something along those lines and and it was at that moment where I it was like when you're a winner when you're a winner you can't lose something, something yeah like but it was at that point where i was like something's not right here that's when i really started to question her but then i was like but they're trying to like slip her a mickey man <laughs> so she indeed does get a mickey slipped and she starts to pass out or whatever but then we're like back over to watching creepy mcgee and younger daughter with this dude like basically like we've spent 10 minutes of him trying to get in her pants and her like leading him on and then being like mm, no maybe we could hang out tomorrow <laughs> yeah after she made him like uh-huh. Like almost set his power on fire. Oh yeah, the weird fire thing. I forgot about that. Something. What is it? It's like, what would you do for paradise or something? Yeah. What like would you do for paradise? And he was like, anything. And he, she's like, give me your lighter. And he's like, can we just go have sex? And <laughs> he's, like, he's like, no, give me your lighter. And he's like, fine. But- 
What about her line about the ambulance, though? Wasn't that like a perfect response to like, I don't want to get to paradise in an ambulance. She's like, why? It'd be a hell of a ride or something. Yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. she gets a lighter and she lights it and she's like, put your hand on it. <laughs> And uh, and I'm like, all right, well, that's you know, <laughs> like, man, it's just like, yeah, I, I get you, I got you. So, but yeah, so uh, yeah, but something, so like, at some point, baby goes crazy, right? And that kind of what what goes on like next. Um, like, okay, so after that happens, that's when. Uh, and Gentry starts to be overcome by the roofie. Um, and they notice. And so they're like, they're like, Oh, we're just going to take her upstairs to sleep this off. Like she'll be fine. Oh, yeah. Which I was, I was, did anyone, did you, either of you notice like, they're like, let's take her upstairs. But then she was in a room that wasn't upstairs. Like, yeah, they were yeah upstairs. yes, yes. That, that, that confused me too. It was probably the director like, I will right, just film some steps later. <laughs> Yeah. Whoops! Budget ran out. Who needs cotton annuity? Who needs cotton annuity? Cotton annuity. I, I, I wrote in my notes like they take her to the addict, and then yeah. when I see them come out of the same like the same level, it's like, oh, okay. I, 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 uh, out and I put locked room. <laughs> I mean, we got a twenty-one-year-old baby and teeth. We don't need cotton. <laughs> yeah, we got teeth and babies. What do we need continuity for? <laughs> Um, but yeah, like baby starts crying and goes ape shit, man. Like baby just starts jumping all over the place and slamming into people. People don't know what's going on, and it creates a ruckus. And somehow yeah. Anne has superpowers, and the roofie doesn't affect her anymore. <laughs> yeah, she's a Wonder Woman. <laughs> like, I mean, there's no way a lot of time had passed now. I no. guess if I were director, I'd be like, oh, yeah, it was like four hours later. Um, whatever. No time passed. It was like five seconds. But anyways, it within all this shit, I mean, stuff's getting thrown around everywhere. And so she kidnaps baby. Mm -hmm. And this is where the movie starts. <laughs> yeah. yeah, pretty much. This is where the movie yeah. starts. In my opinion, this is where the movie starts. This is when shit gets crazy. Uh, it starts turning into a horror film. I'll right. Think, yeah. Know. So, and, and at this point, like, you know, we, we start to see Anne treating baby continuously as a baby. Yeah. And so I think at this point, most people watching are going, okay, so she is not on the level like we thought she is crazy no she's crazy too. yeah and but judith did, is all about it yes but didn't you also find it interesting how even though she was doing that she still dressed him up and made him stand up to make it appear to the family that he was like right yeah, yeah that's what was really weird so yeah she's like trying to make him stand up and take a picture to look like yes that he had progressed she put him in adult clothes but it was all it was all fake it was all just a ruse and yeah. uh, she was still and judith is too and it's like god it's like judith is going oh yay i have a grandbaby now like this yeah is, i'm like judith makes no sense to me no no like, she's the weirdest character man like she's yeah. so weird um in a film full of weird characters <laughs> yeah but i mean uh ann is not is not shy about telling the wadsworth clan that uh hey i stole your baby yeah no yeah yeah. So, uh, it, and it almost it seemed as if it was official, like she uh, acted as if she were Child Protective Services or APS or whatever, and removed right. him from the home. Yet he was at her home. Um, yeah. Yeah. But which I don't know if it'd be part of like that whole guardianship thing that she was talking about, like right. fell in line with that. That's what I kind of had figured. Maybe is how they were justifying that. Yeah, yeah. Well, because, well, the thing is, is that she was supposed, so here's the thing, if you go back, when she's at her work, she she does talk to them, and the whole thing was that she was supposed to get Baby to turn him over to a, uh, like, a professional mental health yeah, facility like or school or something. But she didn't, right. she kept him for herself. This is, again, when we're starting to go, something's 
this isn't right. And then we see the fakeness there and then her actually treating baby like a baby. And it's just super strange. And so, yeah, that, that, and that's essentially how, how I start feeling about that. Um, but I know yeah. at this point the uh, the Wadsworth family decides we're gonna we're gonna break into uh, Anne's house and steal this baby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, which how they found her is like the scene where they're talking about like they have to find her, and mm-hmm. then like two seconds later they found found her. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, well, okay, it's just like I guess the, thing, <laughs> the thing about it was too like when they're break when they're breaking into the house or whatever. To me, well, I was because it was it, it, honestly. I know we said, and I I agree with you 100 percent, Stefan. That this is this is where the film starts. Yeah, for me. That, yeah, I mean, this, go ahead. This is where I started tuning out. Oh, honestly. really? This is yeah. where I was like this is where I was like, all right, what's happening? Well, well, well it right. just like cause, cause break in or whatever. It literally seemed like the stereotypical sitcom break in where oh, they're all dressed in black. Sure. All they needed was the Mission Impossible thing. For sure, but that and, that's and this would've. movie. That's what's odd about this movie about not being able to figure out what genre it is. But I mean, I'm still like these ladies are going to go in here and kill the fuck out of Judith and Anne. Like that's what I'm ready for. Like they're ready to go crazy because Anne uh at this point Anne was sending those pictures to them taunting them yeah yeah so i'm like it's a revenge flick at this point like that's what i was waiting for but man what happened was unexpected yeah i i kept wondering like why do they keep mentioning the pool like yeah, why does yeah. that keep coming up like right i couldn't Judith correlate like that. having this pool made but yeah, I, I think I figured that was gonna uh, gonna tie into the ending somehow when they first brought it up. Right, because yeah, it was this random sidebar of like uh, these workers working on a pool, and so they're digging yeah. this big square thing. But I mean, there were a lot of things that were sidebars that had no reason, like you know the sister trying to sleep with baby and things like that. Yeah. There were a lot yeah. of throwaway things, so I didn't even really pay attention to it until that day, because then she was like it's ready like you know yeah. she gave she gave her that look of oh she's ready i'm like are they gonna kill baby like <laughs> like i didn't know what was gonna happen man but like i didn't know what was gonna happen but yeah so the the sisters and the mama they they try to break in like they're gonna kill this bitch for making baby do adult stuff but man what they weren't ready for was getting killed back they're <laughs> <laughs> never ready for that man <laughs> Jesus, Anne and Judith. Yeah. This is where I said Judith is my favorite character because I love a killer that don't stop. And like when right. she comes at that axe and she's ready to like just be- like cut up that face, like she's ready to just keep yeah. going. And Anne's like, "Whoa, Judith, chill out, chill out, honey. I just I already killed her." <laughs> I-, I just have to say that my favorite part was when they're at the top of the stairs. And all of a sudden, you just see Judith come out. And I was like, yes. hot damn. Yes. <laughs> Judith, man, this one say Judith is my favorite character because, dude, she just comes. This old lady comes out of nowhere and just kills the shit out of. I mean, it was With a freaking meat cleaver, dude. It was a great, meat man. Cleaver. <laughs> and it's just ready to go ham on this chick, man. And Anne's like, calm down. We're just killing people here. Like, we're, <laughs> we're just. Don't go overboard, okay? So I have a question because when I saw Judith and what she was wearing and like when they kept talking about the pool and the things that they were doing, I almost thought that maybe there was going to be some kind of like ritual, like there was going to be a sacrifice of some sort, but I didn't know why. Hmm. Like, and then when she came out in that garb, I'm like, that would have been, that would have been um, more interesting because (laughs) what's implied here is that they knew that the Wadsworth family was going to come and do this and that they were going to kill them months in advance. Yes. Yeah. Because what happens is, is like after stabbing the two sisters to death, they knock out the mom and take the sisters and essentially put them in to bury them where the pool is going to be. 
Yeah. Right. And that's how they dispose of the bodies, which again says that's what they had planned. And yeah. it just, I mean, I love premeditated murder, obviously. Um, but Same. I'm a huge proponent of it. Yeah. Yeah. But this is a little far fetched. I mean, but then again, so I, I don't think Anne's plan to steal baby was far fetched, but the plan to kill them and bury them in the pool area, I feel was a stretch. Really? I mean, okay. So I didn't, I didn't think it was a stretch because in the beginning of the opening credits, you have Judith and Anne sitting there. Anne's going through this new file that she just got after case after caseworker, you know, has gotten off the case and they're discussing it together. And so for me, I felt from the beginning that Judith was involved. Sure. So I, I agree like, with that I, in terms of getting the baby, but not murdering the family. Yeah. Oh. Because especially okay. because how would they have known that the family was going to try to break into their home? Yeah. And they, they were they were and I mean it is from the beginning of this film, which I'm going to say this film has to take place. How, what would you say the the stretch of this film is? Couple of months? Yeah. I, I would say over a month or two, no more than that probably. I feel like I feel like um in the very beginning that Anne said something like, thank you so much for letting me spend the last few months with baby. So I definitely okay. feel like within like the first 10 minutes, at least four months go by in my opinion. <laughs> for, her that, to develop, yeah. for her to develop a relationship with baby. Well, now, they're, they're, they're building and they're, they're, they're putting in this pool from the get go though. Right. And, and so now don't get me wrong. They could have had alternate plans, like maybe they planned on having the women come over and then they were going to kill them or something. I don't know. And it just turned out, oh, great. They showed up on their own. I, I don't know, because yeah. it was never implied ever that there was, a, you know, another yeah. plan in place, because you sure the hell can't hope to God that they break into your house that they that where she doesn't even know where you and Judith live. So. Yeah, I don't know, maybe not necessarily the plan all along to lure them, but I do think the plan all along was to get rid of them in order to do what essentially they were wanting to do and the whole reason why the, they, she took the case to begin with. Right. I mean, she took the case for a purpose, which yeah. we find out yeah. at right. the end. Right, which, which is where we are. Now, I will say the murder scenes are pretty good. Um, they're yeah. good. The, the intensity is good. The tension's there, especially because you're not expecting it because you're expecting uh, the sisters and the mom to be the one doing the murdering. Um, because at this point, you already realize that Judith and mm -hmm. Anne are far too calculated in killing these these women. So, you know, they did have some sort of plan. And so that at this point, you're like, who's the bad guy? Yeah. Because they're both. Like I said, this whole film was just filled with like unlikable characters. Yeah, I unlikable just, characters. They're all sort of terrible people. Yeah, yeah, the only person I liked was Baby. Yeah. yeah. Even and he was because he was an innocent. Yeah, he was an innocent. Yeah. I would have yeah. liked I would have liked the babysitter if she hadn't shoved her teeth in baby's mouth. I got <laughs> off on it. Yeah. Oh, that, oh, I have to say I cringed more times than I thought I would watching this because this film just does not age well at no. all. <laughs> that, that's something we were, yeah. Yeah, there are definitely some antiquated terms that are, that are. You could not make this now. No. no. Not, I know, and I know that, get, that gets tossed around a lot. Uh, Cause I mean, I was watching, I was watching something the other day where somebody was complaining about how the term blazing saddles couldn't get made now gets tossed around a lot but no honest to god you could not make this now no, no. well and that's the thing it's like no you could not use this script verbatim much like blazing saddles you can't use the script verbatim you could still make it um yeah. and yeah. change some things but yeah verbatim mm -mm. there's there's too much i don't know there's too much antiquated stuff it would have to be updated and um yeah it, w it would need a uh uh i don't know a story. <laughs> 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 the continuity. 
got some continuity, uh, you know, like, I don't know, a writer. Um, probably. Character backgrounds. Character <laughs> anything. It did have a director. I mean, you know, it had, it had a director and a cinematographer. That, that, I will say this. I guess that's dude, one thing. The dude, Ted Post, I mean, he's a legit director, so you know he was taking this very seriously. I would yeah. have loved to have seen uh, what uh, what Kaufman and Troma would have done with this film. <laughs> That's exactly what came to mind. Because <laughs> they would have exactly. ex- exploited the shit out of it in all the best ways. <laughs> oh, it would have. Oh, my God. This, 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 it, it, okay. Are we saying that uh, Lloyd Kaufman got a hold of, got a hold of it back in, back when this was made or like when trauma was like big? Uh, like what what era are you talking about? I, I would I don't care any I'd say any time. <laughs> but yeah, I mean there is a big because no because because if trauma got a hold of it today, oh my god, it would be so oh it would be so seedy <laughs> and gross. Oh yeah, and, so like I'm saying late seventies, early eighties trauma, um, where they were still trying to make movies. Um, I think yeah yeah still would have been still would have been ridiculous but uh oh yeah yeah, yeah. but it would have been a little tamer yeah. so uh I, go ahead I was just gonna I had a question like so were either of you surprised at like for the type of film that it was that the acting wasn't bad no and I said this in the beginning the act the actors were not bad actors it was just a bad script yeah, I thought yeah, everyone. I kind of, I kind of disagree with that, honestly. Oh really? Oh. I thought the actors okay. played their role didn't. Exactly I, how I they thought, I thought it was a little too hammy. On it, oh, seventy three though. I mean, <laughs> you know, like the, the seven, It's before like films got gritty. Like it's like yeah. right. It's like a few years away from films getting gritty because like uh, Chainsaw comes out what seventy four. Yeah, seventy four, seventy five. So the very next year, and Texas Chainsaw Massacre changed the landscape of horror films massively. Truly. And so Truly. before that, it was all like goofy shit, like Spider Baby, you know, like it's kind of like that because they're still trying to like pull off of the Universal and that kind of feel and the B movies are what were big at that time. Um, or it was like hammer gothic stuff. So it was like, you know... It, it it fits the time period for me perfectly. Um, Coming out of like sci-fi era type going ons of horror to like actual like possible horror, like things that are going on like that could possibly happen to people. I think yeah. I, like it took a real life turn. It seemed well that and that's what Chainsaw Massacre did by setting it up being based off of true events and in a lot of ways filming it almost documentary style was yeah. Ch- it changed everything. Um, yeah, it's like coming out of like monster movies, creature yeah. creatures. Yeah. Now, yeah. you know, Chainsaw Massacre was not the first for like gore or body horror or anything like that. There were definitely precursors to that, but um, but yeah, this was definitely your standard run of the mill B movie exploitation weird because you know right around this time too late sixties early seventies it's when they were making like those nudie cutie movies and like. Just yeah, exploitation movies like you know, like goofy, goofy movies like you know, because like I said, the gr- it was <laughs> right or right around Grindhouse, but like Grindhouse isn't really kicking in until like mid seventies, and I think Grindhouse is probably sp- like spawned a lot because of Math Chainsaw Massacre. So this is like just fitting. Like I feel like there were those theaters that showed softcore porn. I feel like this movie, even though it's not softcore. That's the type of place it would have been seen in. Oh, yeah, for I sure. Agree. Definitely. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. it was just like, you know, it was just a weird, or at a drive in, you know, or because it said limited release, which means it didn't hit a lot of theaters. So. It's definitely <laughs> like a, I'm not speaking, I'm not speaking for personal preference or anything, but it's definitely like you could, it is definitely like, a fetishy movie, I, yes. you know. Yeah, I and mean, yeah. I wish I could remember. Infantis, uh, what is the word? It's it's infant. Mm, whatever the I said it to you earlier is the yeah. word that describes um, that that fetish of wanting a man to be a baby. Um, yeah. Oh, 
Um, this guy that I was watching his review, he talked about it's like Infanta Summer. And, and uh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Well, see, and I think I, I meant to bring this up a little earlier, but I thought the mother of the film, to me, you know, I feel like, like we were kind of discussing earlier, I feel like Baby was being forced into being a baby. I don't think there was anything particularly wrong with them. And I felt like it was the mother because, you know, we said it, the mother, it, I think it said that her, her husband, two of her, she's been married three times. Two, her first two husbands died, which I think is meant to kind of be under mysterious circumstances. Like she could have, you know, killed them. And uh, the third is missing. Baby's father is missing. Right. So to me, it felt like, she wanted baby to stay a baby so she could have yeah, some kind I, of man. I think they you know. I think they even mentioned something mm-hmm. along those lines, like that that, that was the case. Um, but getting to the end here, so spoiler alert again, we're about to ruin the movie for you because yeah, we, the big have to, we have to talk about this. Is is you finally find out why Anne wanted this baby and why judith was so involved with having this baby man because they go upstairs after everything is said is done and she's essentially the baby's legal guardian so to speak um and i i do i don't think he's 21 in his mind i think all the cattle prodding everything has essentially forced him into that mental stigma yeah. of being that baby but they get up there and we find another man baby with a head injury and it turns out to be her husband. Yep. So she dun, dun, dun. already knew how to raise a man baby, and she <laughs> wanted her husband baby to have a friend baby. Yep. Yeah. That's that's what it was all about. The whole yep. thing was her and Judith trying to make sure that Judith's son-in-law and Aunt's husband had a playmate. Judith's son. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry. yeah, yeah. Judah's son and Anne's husband had a playmate with the same mental capacity, essentially, because in the car wreck that was alluded to, he had a huge brain injury. And for some reason, he's still wearing the wrap around his head, even though it happened. Right. I think they did that just that, quite some time I, I think ago. they really felt like the people watching this film weren't going to keep. So they were like, <laughs> this, this signifies, you know, this is a, this, we need them to know he has a brain injury. So literally put like, you know, a, a, a on his medical team. Yeah. Jeez, yeah. man. Did but yeah. Else, like, were either of you curious, like, because she, like, blamed herself for the accident? Like, I wish I would have elaborated a little more on that. Well, that, and that's what I'm saying. There was no, like, detailed backstory. Like, it was pretty quick. I mean, the movie itself was, like, what, 85 minutes? Like, it didn't even run yeah. an hour and a half. Yeah. Um, like it, it was a long 85 minutes. It, it was, it was indeed. <laughs> and the whole movie felt like it was set in 1985. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was just, yeah, they, they did that. Yeah. And so I, I think she felt guilty and I felt if she, she felt that if she got him a friend or a brother that that would make up for it. And I'm sitting there like, you got to change two grown ass man's diapers and let them yeah. suck on your teeth. But I mean, you know the day. You know who is lactating though? That babysitter. So you gotta back up. (laughs) Gotta back up. Sequel. (laughs) She already knows how to babysit big men. Now I'm gonna call her. (laughs) The fuck is wrong with you? I hope my wife's not listening. (laughs) Uh, <laughs> only that one guy listening to this show yeah <laughs> probably rubbing his nipples well like i can lactate too i guess that's a good thing i'm, I'm your first um guest right Victim. that way yeah know. i mean yeah guest um yeah yes. but yeah uh so essentially yeah that's that's the movie in a nutshell uh yeah, so like I said, this this movie was released in 1973 to a very limited theatrical release to the point where I don't even have information on how many theaters it was released to. There was a limited. Uh, there was. Uh, here's the thing: there was a lot of marketing that was done, mostly in other countries. Really? 
Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I think it's one of those things that, uh, yeah, a lot of times any American film does well in, in those countries, especially back then if you have a country that doesn't have its own film studios, I'm sure. So. Yeah. I got here that uh, it has a 93% based on 15 views on Rotten Tomatoes. Well, now make it now make it sixteen <laughs> reviews. I'm a, put it up. This thing, this thing. I'm sorry, and I'm not trying to, you know, start anything. But this thing has a better rating than Batman Superman. <laughs> That's so stupid. That's I, I so mean, I'm stupid. So- as a better, That's why, um, that right there, the way the Marvel fanboys have bashed the DC movies is exactly why I kill our guests. That's why. Yeah. I mean, yeah. totally. What? We're, we're killing it. We're killing it on this show, man. Uh, wow. But they, yeah, they, so they meant you're a killer guest for such a limited release. Uh, it's been it. it's been released twice before. It's been released on VHS and DVD in the year 2000, and then it's even been re-released in 2011 on Blu-ray and DVD by Severin Films. So, yeah. uh, and they had a transfer over from the original negative, which is where I'm sure Shutter grabbed it from. So it's on Shutter and YouTube if anybody wants to check it out. Um, but yeah, one of the things I wanted to read here is this, um, some of the, uh, the reception here, like we talked about from critics. Uh, so TV guide awarded the film three out of five stars. Yes. Three out of five stars, not as a whole wow. film, but just as a film in general, uh, calling it competently directed and stated despite its occasional lapses into genuine bad taste is fairly effective and contains a truly surprising twist ending. <laughs> Dennis, wow. Dennis, really? Schwartz, yeah, Dennis really? Schwartz from Ozus World Movie Reviews rated the film a grade B, stating that the film managed to hold attention throughout the entire duration and contains... What? And again, contained a genuinely surprising twist ending, but criticized the film's performance as being over the top, as well as, here's me, as well as its use of actual footage of mentally disabled children for exploitation. No! Wow. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah. (laughs) Like I said, I have no idea how much money this film made. I can't find it. Um, I can't find the budget. I'm sure if I really, really dug into it, I could find it. I mean, I've I've been looking and nothing is coming up at all. I mean, we can blame the movies that came out that year because uh, Exorcist came out that year. Oddly enough, Magnum Force, which he also directed, also came out that year. Um, <laughs> what? I, what? I, I want to know this guy. Like you, like you said, he directed a couple of good. Films. Mm-hmm. What made this cross his path? Like he was like, you yes. know, this is the this is the seventies. So at this point, it's not like the studio is like, well, you're under contract and you got to do the film that we tell you. Um, no, at this point, they were they were accepting films, and uh, I, I don't know if this was his first major film. Maybe I don't know, but I mean, he I mean, got mad. Just, I mean, what what made him say like this story needs to be told? Yeah, I know. It's like you he know? read the script and was like, "I am the guy for this." Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm the guy. I like wearing diapers. I'm totally down. Like I completely yeah. relate to this film. I mean, you had <laughs> "Live and Let Die" come out that year. Serpico, "Walking Tall," "African Graffiti," "The String," "The Sting." I mean, lots of good flicks. So. I mean, essentially what that tells me is this, he had other options. <laughs> I mean, this is just like, this is almost like a movie that you would see, like, you know how, like, in show, in television shows and stuff, they'll, like, whenever the characters go to the movies, they have the fake posters in the background. Mm-hmm. This is almost like one of those movies. I know. Uh, to give you an example of exploitation, uh, Cleopatra Jones, Coffee, and Blackenstein all came out that year in terms of black exploitation. The Crazies came out that year, George Romero. Oh. I, I haven't seen that. Oh, it's good, man. Bro, uh, you need and, to. And here's the thing <clears throat> to talk about The Crazies. The Crazies is one of those films that I both enjoy the original and the remake. I think both of them are done very well. I only see. I know, I only find the remake everywhere because I, I, I'd, I'd like to see the original and yeah, it's, it's good. Ooh, Devil and Miss Jones came out. 
that year, all kinds of stuff. I could keep going. But anyways, yeah. So that's our movie. Uh, that That's essentially the movie. Um, and I know uh, we, we what we like to do, Victoria, is we like to uh, rate the movie um, in five stars uh, or up to five stars uh, as a horror movie yeah. and as a legit movie. So you, we basically, yeah, okay. we'll rate it twice. So uh, we'll start with uh, we'll start with a legit movie. So uh, as a legit movie, I rate this uh, half a star. I did not think it was great. I didn't think the pacing was well. I thought the story was discombobulated. It was all over the place. Uh, the subject matter was so weird. Um, there was teat sucking, um, and it it was just. I don't know, just a strange film. I, I I thought the acting was okay. I thought it fit what it was, but I didn't think it was anything remarkable. Um, so yeah, I'm going to give it, and I've never done this, but I'm giving a, a movie for a legit movie, half a star. I've, I've never, you like everything you've ever seen. So I thought, I, yeah, that's pretty mind blowing. What about, what about you, Lance? Oh, uh, we're just doing a movie right now or horror yeah, movie? Yeah, regular movie. Regular movie. You know, honestly, I I'm, I I feel pretty much the same way you did, but I'm gonna give it a two. Two stars. Two, just because I because like I said, it was I thought it was well directed. The cinematography, cinem- I can't pronounce words today. It's because it sucked. Uh, they, huh? It's because it sucked. Well, I, I thought the cinematography was good. And <laughs> yes, the, the, yes it, the story, I felt like it was ambitious, though. <laughs> I do feel like it was ambitious. I, Me- I felt because nothing else, I mean, I, I don't even know, man, to this day. Nothing. Uh, no, I'm, I've never seen anything quite like this, for better know, or for worse. Do you know why it got half a star for me and not zero, not bomb? The costumes, because I love the costumes. The costume, no. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> the costume and the makeup, hair, makeup and hair. That's that's it. That's what I got. But I, I just, like I said, I I just I felt like I felt like it was very ambitious. Did it? Did it achieve? I mean, did it did it succeed? No, <laughs> but <laughs> I felt I felt like I felt it was very ambitious. It was very brave to say that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What about you, Victoria? What, Victoria? What about you? Oh, um, so I, I'm kind of along the lines with with Lance here. Um, not quite two stars for me, though. It, it's going to be one and a half. Um, and, and essentially for the same reasons, like, I do feel like it was ambitious. There were, I think there were a lot of good ideas behind the script. Mm -hmm. Um, it just wasn't fully fledged. Uh, they missed a lot of, I think, great opportunities for character building and, and to kind of create this world for us that we could fully be enveloped in the story. I don't think we were able to really get attached to any one particular character very well because we didn't really have any background information. Um, but yeah, the cinematography was great. The the acting, given the script, was not bad. I I did not not enjoy it. Like I, it was interesting. It was it was very cringeworthy, um, but it wasn't horrible. Like. Mm. You know, I don't know if I'd watch it again for fun. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> now, I, I'd, watch it. Yeah. I'd watch it with a group of people and Mystery Science Theater 3000 the shit out of it. Sure, I yeah, mean, totally. In that regards, totally. yeah, but I'm not going back and watching it like I do Spider-Baby. No, yeah. or I'm like, like, watch it with someone who's never seen it just to watch them cringe. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah, just to watch <laughs> Just to watch their expressions. Yes. yes. Yeah. I, I will say this, that uh, they, the producers missed a golden opportunity to create a sequel called The Toddler. 
True. And seen him <laughs> where, as, where baby ages. Yes, where a little, he's yeah. he's a thirty year old man, yeah. and he's now the age of two. Yeah. <laughs> played by a fifty five year old. Played by yeah, played by Roy Schreider. Like you're gonna uh, need a bigger crib. Yeah, you're gonna need a better crib. Uh, or yeah, and then the next one, of course, which is like it's just called teething, and it's a three year old, and it's like Burgess Meredith. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, as a horror movie, as a horror movie, again, half a star. I'll give it one star because I really liked Judith coming at this bitch with this meat cleaver. <laughs> oh man, um, I did enjoy that quite a bit. Um, but yeah, it was it was far more exploitation, far more. I don't know, drunk M Night Shyamalan to like for me to consider it a horror movie. It just didn't feel like a horror movie in any way, shape or form. It felt more exploitation. I know there are people who say that, that, that fits into that genre. It didn't for me. Um, it was just weird more than anything. Um, the only reason it gets one star is cause it did. It made me laugh. And I do like horror movies, uh, that, you know, make fun of themselves though. I think this movie was trying to take itself seriously, but it made, it made, yeah, yeah. Me, it made me laugh a number of times because of how ridiculous uh, Judith was and how ridiculous the uh, Wadsworth clan was. Like, they were, all their scenes were the best. Like, yeah. <laughs> hated, yeah. Those were the best. But, but to be fair, M. Night Shyamalan, if he were drunk, could still make a better fucking movie. For sure. For sure. Sorry, excuse my language. Yeah. It, it, yeah. <laughs> Do you both think, though, that this is one of those films that uh, could benefit from a remake? Yes. No. Oh, I really? Say, I say no, just because it's so it's so culty that what's going to happen is that someone's going to remake it with cult in mind, and it's 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 going to miss the point. Like I said, this movie took itself, tried to take itself seriously. And I think, think they'll play it for laughs. They'll play it for laughs. That's why I said, I think trauma, that's exactly what they would do. You know, like, yeah. and I yeah. think it would miss the point And it would be one of those awful movies that when you're going down a rabbit hole on Amazon Prime that you come across that you're like, how'd this end up on Amazon Prime? Like yeah. that, it's going to be one of those. So, yeah, I'd, I, 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 I can see that. Boy, well, you, you said you think it should. Not that it should. I think that it could be um, with the right director. Um, I, honestly, to the credit of Netflix um, here, they have a lot of really good original content that I've enjoyed mm-hmm. or in adaptations. Sure. Um, and I could see if they if they if Netflix chose to be like, hey, let's let's remake this, but let's let's update it. Let's modernize it and have a better script and have a full while, like a full, a well thought out storyline with the same ideas of like, this person's been made to believe in and act a, as a baby and take out the exploitation part of it and more make it like that horror where like you are like deathly afraid of this family and like <laughs> what they do to people yeah. and, and use this, this baby, this man, baby, to lure people in to care about. I can see that. Cause like, then yeah. they could really spend time on the conditioning that he's going through where he can yes. have these moments of recognizing that he is a man and then they beat it out of him or things like that. Yeah. I could, I could. All right. You won me over. Because especially <laughs> because you can serious, tell. Yeah. Yes. And especially because you can tell like when she, when Anne is coaxing him to like, go get the ball, bring the ball back. Like he's looking back at Mrs. Wadsworth, like, yeah like is this okay should i do do this am i gonna get hurt again if i if i do like there's that thought process you can tell he's thinking there's someone inside there literally trapped you know yeah i guess i can see that so but what about you lance for horror movie uh i'm gonna go one and a half and that's just for the last like i said 20 minutes and because i do i i if if the if the last tw- twenty minutes wasn't attached to the other seventy, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it would probably rate higher. But it was just like, like I said, like the last twenty minutes to me, 
is where it does become a horror film. But it would, but it was just like by, by that point, I was just sort of checked out. I was just sort of going through the motions of the film. Mm-hmm. You know, it just, well, I mean, I was just sort of sitting there watching. It's not, it's not like whenever that segment of the film started that I was like, <gasps> like just, you know, became elated, like, oh, this is getting good. It was like, no, by then it's too late. Yeah. So. You know? <laughs> Does slow burn not really work well for you, or it just didn't work well for? No, see, a slow burn does. I love it. It was like yeah, me too. Whenever <laughs> I think of slow burn, for some reason, I always think of the 2014 Godzilla film because yep. people were bitching, "Oh, Godzilla's not in it enough. Godzilla's not in it enough." And to me, it was just sort of like, well, yeah, because this is sort of like the Batman Begins for Godzilla. Yeah. Like they're reintroducing the character. Yeah, and that was definitely. I, I feel like that film's definitely a slow burn. Mm-hmm, and I, sure. I don't. It just. It was just this. It was just like. I don't. I like. I think I was. I don't know. I. I was telling Stefan earlier. I. I was like in a. I was kind of in a bad way when I watched this film. Like, cause, cause the day before I had done like a lot of yard work and stuff, and I was like dehydrated. I felt like I was sick almost. And I was like, well, let me go ahead and watch this because I'm going to be hauled up in bed. And I, I think I was just maybe in such a, like, a pissed off mood. I was just like, fuck this movie. <laughs> you were trapped, <laughs> you know? basically. What's that? <laughs> like you were trapped. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I was just like, I you was were like, jailed just, like a baby in a crib. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's why. I mean, I was just watching it relating to it too much. Like, <laughs> All right. What it, what's your rating for a horror movie, Victoria? Oh. <clears throat> uh, I'm gonna have to go with the one. Um, it, it didn't come off so much just horror to me as, uh, like, like suspense, like terror suspense with uh, some, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't even I would, but I see I wouldn't even put it like in a category of a thriller. Yeah, me neither. It, it, it is more of like a, a horrific suspense. Um, train wreck where like you want to look away but you can't um, <laughs> exploitation <laughs> way to describe this film you know? train wreck yep. and and it's like you just you, you need to see what's going to happen next like you like and I think on some level I was like okay maybe it's going to get better like maybe maybe there's going to be a catalyst here like maybe there's yeah. like this point but I mean the slow burn like I felt like okay within the first 10, 15 minutes of the film, like, all right, I already understand these broads. Like, I know what they're about. I know what they're doing. Can we please get to it? And it just kept going. Yeah. And going and going. And then we get to the scene where the, and even, even the sisters breaking into the house, did it really need to take 10 minutes for us to watch them creep through some bushes? I no. mean, that's why I'm like, <laughs> how short was that original script, man, that they were like, we just, hey, girls, we're going to need you yeah. to play around in these bushes really? for like 10 more minutes because we need to get close to his 90s. <laughs> like I said, that all it needed all it needed was the uh, uh, Mission Impossible music. I would have right. laughed my ass off if that had happened. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, it was, but yeah, but yeah, or yeah, like I, you said, I, if this was a sitcom, I'd watch it. If it was like yeah. a horror yeah. sitcom, I'd watch yeah. it. Cause there was that, some it can make, that can maybe work. I could yeah. see it. It's, it's either got to go. It's either got to go really stupid and be sitcommy and goofy, or it's got to go serious as fuck. Like, yeah, I could see it as a mini series. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, I did. I, I so there was one particular, and maybe this was part of like a saving grace for me and like the comedic part of this because I think it's even described as a comedic horror. Um, yeah, I'm sure it is. Um, where uh, Anne has escaped with with baby in her car, but she took a knife from the kitchen, right? right. And so she takes off. the The trio get into their vehicle to speed off after her, and like we thought, like oh, it's gonna be like this, like this chase, right? No, she flattened their back tire, yeah, probably- and like they can't move anywhere. And then I don't know who says it, but someone's like. Man, she thinks of everything, and yeah. I'm like, yeah. what? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I remember. Yeah. 
Strikes of everything. She, she really is smart, guys. <laughs> Maybe she should have baby. Because yeah, one of one of the daughters was like, we should get, we should get baby. But it was to great. Her. Right? Yeah, like the youngest daughter, right? Was right. like one of them was like, we should give her baby. She, you know, I don't think what we're doing is good. Yeah, and and yeah. even suggested what like the circus, like I guess the circus wanted to like buy yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. So, yeah, it gets a one from me. <laughs> yeah. Well, that seems like uh, your time is up. So uh, thank you uh, for Vic- Victoria there. Uh, thank you for uh, the baby for uh, making that movie, Ted Post. And uh, thank you, Victoria, for spending the rest of your life with us today. Yeah, we really do appreciate it. My life, I mean, I, um, uh, I mean, thanks for having me, but I've I've got to go let my my dog out. No, 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 no. That you you won't ever have to worry about your dog again. Yeah, I'm just gonna tighten these ropes, Lance. If you'll go Uh, ahead and get the chainsaw. What? Hey, stop! Stop it, Lance. Yep. Lance. Uh, uh, oh, okay. Just got uh, it. I just oiled what? her up a little bit. What? What are you doing with that? Uh, Well, on that note, looks like we've got human remains to clean up, so uh, we need to get out of here. And uh, you know what? Uh, we'll, we'll see you guys next time. Uh, looks like uh, the dog's are already smelling the flesh, uh, but we'll see you guys next time. But uh, you know who won't be seeing us? Victoria. <laughs> 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 oh man well uh thank you guys for tuning in this has been Stefan, your mister of the dark your other mister of the dark the man with no name lance wayne and uh we want to go ahead and thank uh some cool uh, some cool people for making our theme song yeah we want to thank uh cory adams and ashley jones adams from nothing wrong and, and uh, let's get out of here man like i said this has been Stefan. But before we go, dear listeners, I just want to leave you with this. You can't kill the boogeyman. (laughs) Good night. We love you, Elvira.